everyone. Hope you had a good weekend. Welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks on this Monday evening. It's the 8th day of August 2022, and boy, August has been a steam bath thus far. A lot of hot and humid weather. We have added a few 90-degree days to our tally for the year, and the dew points have not dropped below 70, it seems like, in months now, but it's it's been a few days at least since we've seen dew points that have been lower than the upper 60s and lower 70s. Now, you know, your mileage really can vary at this time of the year. I oftentimes uh, talk about a feast or famine pattern uh, with uh, random summertime thunderstorms, especially when it's this humid. Thunderstorms, thunderstorms can really dump a lot of rain in a short amount of time, but it can be very localized. A lot of us miss out on it, and so far in August, barely a drop of rain from Newton Falls over towards Vienna, catching the Cortland area, catching the Warren area, but just across the state line, mostly because of what happened Friday evening, uh, parts of the Newcastle area heading up towards New Wilmington, into uh, areas just east of Sharon, and especially over towards Mercer along Route 19. Three, four, even five plus inches worth of rain, pretty common so far in August. So very short distance here to travel from basically a continued drought situation to having a surplus, a big surplus for August so far. Now, of course, longtime viewers of this uh, video know that we get our official weather records for our television viewing area at the Youngstown Warren Airport, and there, a goose egg so far this month. We had a trace officially, but no measurable precipitation at the Youngstown Warren Airport through the first seven plus days into the eighth day of August. That puts us almost an inch behind average for the month. And because of this dry stretch to open August, we're now in a deficit for the year. For most of 2022, we've had a surplus of precipitation since January 1st, but now we're running a modest deficit because it has been uh, pretty dry, at least at the airport of late. At the airport, we've added three 90 degree temperatures to our uh, tally of 90 degree days so far in 2022. And a couple of these were kind of surprising. I mean, I, I was not expecting 91 on Friday. Even the 93 that we had yesterday was an overachiever. Our forecast was for upper 80s, but it got a few degrees warmer than that. You know, when the ground is dry, uh, and as it is, where that sensor is at the airport, dry ground, can heat up faster. The sun's energy, uh, there's less energy going to evaporating moisture near the ground when it's dry, when the, when, the, when the soil is dry, and all that or most of that incoming solar radiation can then be devoted to heating the ground, which in turn heats the air. When you have a lot of moisture on the ground, you've had frequent precipitation of late, a lot of the in incoming solar radiation then has to be diverted towards evaporating some of the moisture. Uh, as opposed to all of it just heating the ground and heating the air. And so, yeah, it's been dry at the airport, so maybe it shouldn't be that big of a surprise that we've had a couple of overachievers of late. Kind of a cool way to visualize where we've been over the last 30 days since uh, early in July. Uh, kind of a scatter plot here is what uh, mathematicians and statisticians uh, call this. Uh, in this corner up here, these are all the days that have featured both a warmer than average day and a warmer than average night. No surprise, over the last month, that's been the most frequent combo we've had. We've only had a couple of cool days and warm nights, at least compared to the average. That's pretty uncommon. Just a handful of cool days and cool nights, and just a handful of warm days and cool nights. Again, all of this compared to the average. And, you know, considering that we are running above average temperature-wise for the summer, uh, it's not a surprise the way that graph looks, but it's still kind of a cool way to look at things. All right, we're into the second week of August now, which means, yeah, we are into solar autumn. That's the three months of the year in which we're losing daylight at the fastest rate. The rate peaks in late September, early October, but from now through early November, that's that three-month stretch where we uh, lose daylight at the most rapid pace. Right now, it's about two minutes and 17 seconds or so uh, worth of daylight loss per day. It peaks around two minutes and I believe 42 seconds of daylight loss per day right around the autumnal equinox and into the first week of October. Yeah, it's, it's becoming noticeable, especially over the weekend. You know, a lot of times at sunset, I'm sitting in this room. But on the weekends, uh, when I'm not, and this past weekend, I, I, I mentioned uh, to my wife yesterday, I was, you know, a little thrown off by yeah, getting kind of dark a little bit earlier. Um, you know, when, you, when you're only out and about a couple days a week at that time of the day, it's easy to kind of, uh, you know, lose touch with the changing daylight uh, at this time of the year and also back in the uh, spring season as well. All right, we have a couple of pretty hefty thunderstorms over the lake as of this recording, 6.53 this evening. I guess if these hold together, I guess I wouldn't be surprised if we had a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings at some point in parts of uh, maybe Cuyahoga, Geauga, Lake Counties. Uh, overall, the environment is less favorable in far eastern Ohio and western PA for these storms to, to you know, keep going. 
but in somewhat of a decayed fashion, I, I think a lot of us will probably see a shower and perhaps even get a thunderstorm before the evening is through. Be sure and keep tabs on anything on the Storm Tracker 21 app, and I'll uh, be posting on social media as well. You know, we really could use a break from the humidity. A lot of people, you know, they don't want summer to go away. They like the heat, but I don't know a lot of people that are big fans of this kind of humidity. When you have dew points in the 70s, for day after day, you don't get much relief at night because the temperature can't drop below the dew point. And if the dew point's 70 or 72 constantly, that means the overnight temperature is not dropping below 70 or 72. So you just don't get much relief at night. And we've been just stuck in this really since the very beginning of August. But on the weather map, visible finally this evening over the upper Midwest, the lower dew point air, and it will come our way over the next couple of days. Two fronts heading our way. The first one just slowly sags through on our Tuesday. Showers here and there in the morning, maybe a thunderstorm. I think most of the shower activity kind of hugs the front in the afternoon, and that probably puts it closer to Interstate 70 for a lot of the afternoon. We should get away mostly dry, although it's going to be a fairly cloudy day, and I think the clouds will keep a lid on temperatures on Tuesday. Instead of the upper 80s, we'll probably stop in the upper 70s, below average for a change on our Tuesday. Now that front becomes stationary, maybe even wiggling far enough back north for a time tomorrow night into Wednesday morning to give us a shower. Higher chances to our south, I think. But then front number two arrives later Wednesday night into Thursday. This is the front that has the true big time air mass change we'll really notice the air mass change behind that front uh, on thursday and into thursday night and into friday of the weekend look at these dew points i could just give this chart a kiss you know with dew points this low there's going to be some overnight temperatures probably friday night saturday morning especially in some of the cooler nooks across the area we might see a 47 degree reading something in that ballpark anyway friday night saturday morning what a big change that'll be compared to where we've been of late. Great looking forecast for the end of this week and into the weekend. Small shower chance Thursday with that second front. Small ch shower chance on Sunday, but most of the end of the week and the weekend will be just fine. And Looking into the longer range, I don't see a lot of heat uh, compared to the average. In the longer range, this is you know kind of mid-August, 16th through the 22nd. Odds are favoring at least somewhat cooler than average temperatures. At the very least, it'll be closer to average than we've been uh, during the first week or so of August. Make it a great Monday night, everyone. I'll see you back here on Tuesday for a fresh edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. And again, I'll keep an eye on those storms off to our north and west this evening and uh, keep, you, uh, keep you up to date on what to expect for tonight.